It was the hottest 24 hours of the year in the UK and it was a day of firsts, 24 hours of making memories. My first time out of the house since March 2020, my first time away, my first stop at a roadside pub to break up the journey with my best friend. Always believe in magic and possibilities, the sign said. And as I walked into Glastonbury Town Centre for the first time in 25 years and saw all the beauty inside the shop windows, it was like coming up for air after a long hibernation. And I could feel the magic around. What a magical place to start again to start again after lockdown and hiding away the hottest 24 hours of the year we did melt but it was a beautiful melting surrounded by magic every direction you look in in Glastonbury the shops are magical there are crystals set in walkways this is no ordinary shopping centre. <laughs> this is no ordinary high street. Crystal angels embedded amongst rock crystals, leading to shops with interiors as equally magical, with wrapped branches and murals and swans greeting me everywhere. What a place. place of magic, of myth, of legends, of kings laid in rest, of portals to lands of the dead and the islands of Avalon. This really is a magical place. Shop owners talk to us of the ley lines underneath their buildings that they could feel and everywhere you turned, people were friendly and welcoming, popping surprise gifts into our bags with our purchases. It was beautiful. A place of healing, of dragons and crows painted on walls to greet us, of flowers and magical secret courtyards. This was exactly what my soul needed after the long winter of 2020 and 2021. This place had hope in the air along with ridiculous, excessive amounts of magic. When the interiors of shops look like this with wishing fountains in and the exteriors match your own outfit, you know you're in a magical place. Every shop window greeted me with goddesses. If wonder could be sold by the bag for, then these shops were the shops that would sell it to you. A treasure trove on a high street of magic. And after our first day in the shops, we went on a slightly cooler evening walk around some of the old churches of Glastonbury. This is St. Benedict's, such a beautiful old church. And the crows and the moon came out to greet us and to answer our calls. Opposite St. Benedict's, the Goddess Temple, with swans emerging from moons and clouds. It was wonderful. Then we walked out of Glastonbury around the footpath, which gave us a view of the tour. It was still boiling hot, so we stopped on the lower footpath to watch the sunset. The end of our first 12 hours in Glastonbury. What a 12 hours it had been. As we sat and watched the sun go down, a black cat came out to greet us, rubbed up against both of us. It just felt like an omen. It felt like magic. It felt like a rebirth. 
into something new, the magic of the sun setting, the magic of the cat, the magic of an energy rush that we felt come up the hill towards us. It was something else. And the next day we woke up to an even hotter day, if that was even possible. And the cool shade of the Chalicewell Gardens called to us. The beautiful flowers, so fragrant as we walked in. We could sense the healing of this place before we even made it through the first arch. We were so excited to visit this place. Magical pathways in and there the gardens with the most incredible sculptural flowers over a set of small ponds. They looked almost like metal sculpture. They were absolutely incredible. I'd never seen anything so beautiful. And this place had an atmosphere, just I'd never experienced anything like it before. It was as magical as the flowers and peaceful and calm, a place of healing. And then the sound of water behind me through a gateway of trees caught my ears and I just had to go and investigate where was the water coming from, where was that sound, what was through the gate. There was a magical grove under trees with iron laced water falling down a waterfall, moss covered rock face and again a walking path into a healing pool with steps down. Magical healing places in dappled sunlight. It was breathtaking. My shoes came off to soak up the grounding energy of this magical place. As I walked down to the first pools that we'd seen just beyond the flowers as we'd walked in, we could see a walking path and everything in me knew that I needed to walk it. It was like a, a magnetic pull. I needed to walk it and I knew that it would be important to walk it and so with great reverence and a magnetic pull I took a deep breath and I stepped in.
And as I walked, the tears began to fall. I walked and cried and didn't understand why. It felt like a deep healing had happened and my friend was so surprised to see me crying. She dropped her trousers into the water to give me a big hug. This place, this magical, healing, wonderful garden, it touched my soul, it really did. And then we left the grove to collect water from the famous lion's head. And past hostas and hide rangers and just so much inspiration for my own magic garden. We wandered around, we found top paths under trees, we found cool archways dripping with fruit, people taking shade in every corner, and we carried on up the garden to find the well, the chalice well an image that I'd seen so many times and was just so excited to see it with my own eyes. And there, through the sycamore tree archway, there it was, the chalice well. We took a seat and we waited for people to leave. <laughs> and then I walked down a real pilgrimage, this, this is what pilgrimages are made of, down into a really sacred space that was so magic laced, it's indescribable. It took my breath away. We viewed the garden from the top down and we made our way down to find the angel seat. But first, the most magical little grove just to the right of the chalice well. Next time I am coming armed with candles and incense and magic to do in this place, in this grove. Somebody had already lit, lit a candle, there was a shell, there were flower buds. It was a place to leave an offering for sure. It was so stunning. So we continued down through the wonderful flowers to find the angel seat and in amongst the green and the butterflies dancing and the bees buzzing we found it underneath a dark and cool clematis the angel seat another place of magic
then up the steps to the meadow to try and find somewhere cool to sit to escape the heat, past some spectacular orange trees dripping with orange berries. into a meadow that was scorched and baking. Every shady corner <laughs> had people already sitting there. It was such a hot day. So we carried on round, we took in the view and we continued to search for some shade to catch our breath to just take in this place, this atmosphere, this sacred land. This is a place where it doesn't surprise you that there are ley lines beneath. You feel the energy coming up through your toes. So we continued on and we came once more to the tunnel with fruit dripping from its ceiling. And at last, an empty, shady swing chair found next to a magical tree. We sat for a while here and then we went and sat under the tree on a breezy slope. And we caught our breath and we cooled down and we chatted about how amazing this 24 hours has been. Then on the way home, we stopped at the seaside we weren't far from the ocean we just both wanted to touch base with ocean air and the smell of the sea so a tiny pit stop on the way home after 24 hours of complete magic <laughs>